Hi, everyone, uh, and welcome on this Thursday uh, evening for myself, and I think for many of you, uh, to the Leadership and Management Program Advisory Committee's uh, spring uh, um, offering for the Day in the Life of a Leader series. Uh, and tonight we have members of our, uh, our Program Advisory Committee uh, uh, to talk about the topic of game changer, so transformational planning perspectives. Um, this was obviously a topic I think that uh, many of you can probably guess that we came to uh, because of the, the different changes that have been happening in the world right now right now and the different uh, massive transformations that all information organizations uh, have been going through. And um, uh, so we wanted to get some expert perspectives on this. Now, tonight we have uh, just a brief overview of what we're going to be talking about. Uh, we have presentations from uh, our five PAC members, and then at the end of the presentations, we'll have time, uh, at all of the presentations, we'll have time for, for questions. And we ask that you uh, use the chat function in Zoom or raise your hand and uh, myself or my co-host, uh, Dr. Sue Allman, will call on you. So just a quick introduction for all of our speakers. <clears throat> Our first speaker, I want to make sure we're all on the same page. Um, our first speaker is uh, Amanda Folk. Uh, she is the, an assistant professor and head of teaching and learning at the Ohio State uh, University Library. She will be followed by uh, uh, Dr. Melissa uh, Fraser Arnaud, who is the director uh, at Parliament of Parliamentary Relations and Planning Office at the Parliamentary Budget Officer uh, for uh, in um, Ontario, uh, Ottawa, Ontario, Canada. Then our uh, colleague uh, Annapurna Dandu, who is the Library Services Manager at Santa Clara County Library District, will talk with us followed by Kelvin Watson, who is the executive director of the Las Vegas Clark County Library District and a current candidate for ALA president. So if you are an ALA member, we hope that you have voted for our friend Kelvin. And then last but not least, um, our, uh, we'll, we'll hear from Daphne Wood, who is the director of planning and organizational development at the Vancouver Public Library in Vancouver, Canada. So now I'm going to turn it over to Amanda. Hi, everyone. I'm just starting my timer here to make sure that I keep myself on track. Thank you so much for the invitation to join this evening. I'm really excited to hear from my other colleagues and learn from them. Um, as Deborah mentioned, my name is Amanda Folk. I'm the head of teaching and learning at the Ohio State University Libraries. So I'm a department head in a really large libraries organization. Ohio State is one of the largest research universities in the country. And so our uh, library organization is commensurate with that. To give you an idea of what's on my mind as I approach this topic of transformational planning um, as a department head, I'm thinking specifically about the transformation that I'm going to need to make with my department as we move from um, the pandemic crisis into the endemic stage of the pandemic, or some of us may call it post-COVID as well. This world in which we're all kind of living with COVID and we're moving from this uh, time of crisis into what the next stage of our new normal looks like. And I think all of us have been in crisis mode and crisis management mode for the past two years. And now we're probably thinking about how to shift into change management. And there are a few things that I think I've learned as a manager um, over the past two years that are gonna be helpful to me as I manage a team that will most likely be hybrid from this point on. So prior to the pandemic, um, all of my team worked on site either four to five days a week so we had a shared office suite, office suite within the same library location. We were really collegial. We were known as a fun group. Everybody really enjoyed each other as people and of course also enjoyed working together um, to meet shared goals. And so the pandemic was particularly hard for my unit um, because suddenly we were all isolated from one another and didn't have that daily connection that we once did. And over the past year or so, as we somewhat have transitioned into a new normal, and many of us have moved back to on-site work, a lot of my team has continued to work fully remotely from their home locations 
or has had a hybrid schedule. So for example, I'm in the office two days a week, but I work from home three days a week. And this has posed a variety of challenges for thinking about how we move forward as a team. Some things that I've been thinking a lot about um, are communication strategies. And so over the past two years, communication almost became more important that it, than it has ever been. And it was already a critical skill to be able to facilitate as a manager. And so I found myself feeling like I was over communicating with my team a lot of the time over the past couple of years. But this is something that I've learned that they really appreciate. I think um, sharing information as I have it, being transparent about what I know in terms of decision making or plans that the libraries or the university might have for moving forward and being transparent about what I don't know uh, goes a really long way in helping to ease folks anxiety either in a time of crisis or also in a time of change. A lot of times folks can be resistant to change for a variety of reasons, but sometimes it's really fear of the unknown and not being sure what's going to happen next and how that's going to affect them. So making sure that I'm sharing the most up-to-date information as soon as I have it, and also being clear about what I don't know and what I think might happen in the future has been incredibly important for um, maintaining trust among my team. And this has taken a variety of forms. So uh, I already had a department meetings scheduled every other week and we would get together and do a lot of sharing. Uh, before I think we felt like we really needed to have a very structured agenda. And sometimes that is helpful, but also having department meetings that are really open and just allowing folks to raise questions or concerns that they have or share topics that they're really interested in. So we have this, um, this uh, 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 we have a spirit of sharing among our team. So it's not just me sharing out to them, but us sharing with one another. Um, I maintained my regular meeting schedules with all of my direct reports, of course, as well. And we quickly uh, changed to having a Teams channel. Uh, Teams was just coming to Ohio State as we were moving into the pandemic. I wouldn't say we were slow to adopt, but we didn't have um, a strong need for it uh, before the COVID uh, crisis hit. But very quickly, team members thought it would be helpful for us to have a channel where we could um, uh, chat with one another, um, and that could be informal uh, teleworking chatter uh, just to keep a connection strong, or it could be um, formal information sharing, including sharing documents. Another thing that we implemented, too, was an informal lunch gathering for folks so they can continue to connect uh, with the relationships that they had with their colleagues, even if we weren't necessarily um, able to see each other face to face. So potlucks were really popular uh, in my department prior to the pandemic. And just being able to share lunch a couple of times a week and catch up with what's happening in one another's lives became a really important mechanism for maintaining um, a team spirit and collegiality in a hybrid work environment. The other thing I did too was I split my department into two separate teams. Um, one based on student success and one based on supporting instruction across the university so that we had a very formal way to continue sharing information that we might have shared very informally in our department spaces prior to the pandemic. So there was a lot of communication that happens informal when you just see each other, you think, oh, hey, Jane, I forgot to tell you, I was in this meeting yesterday and this topic came up and um, I thought it might be something that you're interested in. We do do some of that by email, but of course the email volume can get quite large. So we have created a formal space for us to do some of that informal information sharing and making sure that we're all on the same page and not duplicating efforts among our team environment. Uh, one final thing that I'll say, uh, because I see that I am getting close to time here, is even though we are kind of shifting into this new normal phase and kind of transforming the work that we're doing, most likely in hybrid environments, I think it's really important to recognize that the past two years um, have been traumatic in many ways for almost all of us. And so being patient with ourselves and with our team members and recognizing that a lot of us are working through a lot of um, difficult emotions over the past two years and moving into the future as we think about the current war situation in Europe and the fact that COVID has not gone, gone away. I think we do need to keep that in mind too as we're working with our colleagues and thinking about what the future of our libraries looks like. And with that, I will pass the microphone to my next colleague. 
Thank you so much, Amanda. So up next is Annapurna. Uh, so uh, Annapurna, on to you. Hello, everyone. I would like to share my screen as I have a couple of slides. I hope that's working. And thank you for the opportunity. Thank you for having me here. And I'm very happy to be here. And I, I'm happy to be sharing the good work that we are doing at the Santa Clara County System. Like everyone else, we have faced numerous challenges in the past couple of years. And I think when we started work in the very beginning in early 2001, after we closed, we just sent people home and then we slowly started planning our activities, bringing people back into work and looking at how things are working, what our priorities and all that. We had come up with a few iterations of goals for ourselves as a library. And this is one iteration of it. The others prior to this were not so, um, I thought would take a lot of time, so I don't have them here. But building our goals, we had uh, divided them into different buckets and put them like this for staff development, website and online library. We concentrated on building some, pro uh, doing some building projects and all that. So, uh, just going a little further into some of these staff development and support, it was really important for us when we were in this COVID time to make sure that staff was okay, connected, and knew what they had to do during that time. And a lot of our staff members were also deployed as disaster service work. So we were working with a very small staff. And we had some retirements and staff moving movement internally within our organization. So we were working with a, with a slim staff. And in spite of that, uh, our staff was flexible, adaptable, and creatively used their time, the limited resources that we had, to come up with services for our patrons. So we took that as an opportunity to build our student portal, which is another website that we have created for our local schools where students don't have to come into the library website to use the library, but they can go into the student portal from their own website and just access the educational materials they need and then check out items online or whatever they need, do their business and then leave the site. So they were not connected with the main site, but just could use the student portal site. So during this time, we also improved our uh, online cards, online cards renewal process, and we worked on a few other online uh, projects and all that. And we took this as an opportunity to build uh, some of our, uh, to move some of our building projects forward. So our Campbell Library had just passed a measure, and so that's in the works. Now it's still working, but me at that time, I was working at the Sar uh, Saratoga Public Library. I took that as an opportunity. Uh, we changed our carpets, make sure we got the lighting uh, project done and got some uh, projects done during that time so we could use that time before the patrons came in. And for patrons, in order to support and give them access, we put in free Wi-Fi access in our parking lot to ensure that they connect with the uh, external world, have access to the internet. And during this time, we also worked um, and opened our libraries as uh, cooling centers, heating centers, clean air centers, and all that. So our patrons and their pets had a space to go to in their time of need. We also developed some uh, district-wide programs like the online story time project, which was essential for our patrons. They were not getting out, but we were trying to reach them via our Facebook page, using our Zoom accounts, just like everyone else. So some of those programs we did develop. And after this, we completed most of our programs. If you look at this slide, the purple ones were what the ones we were planning. And once we had completed this iteration, we moved into our next commitments, which was this. We came up with, this was in um, summer of last year, since um, we wanted to make sure that we had some focus and we were working towards some common goals and all that. This is what we had come up with. 
Uh, these were the five spokes in the wheel that we wanted to concentrate on, celebrate and support reading and learning. As a part of this, we have uh, created a kinder readiness program for our young ones that are going into kindergarten who didn't actually have that exposure or lack that kind of socialization with people during these past two years. So we are trying to help those kids using our kinder readiness program. And then besides that, we also have the summer, we had the summer reading last year, the distinguished author series. We did bring in a few distinguished authors to talk to our patrons. And we had about 2000 people come to those programs because they were not heading out anywhere and they needed outlets. So these were some things that we provided to our community and um, in providing an inclusive, extraordinary and library experience, we made sure that we expanded our hours slowly. So right now we are open full hours, which is we are a seven day operation and everything is open. All our libraries are open uh, pre pandemic hours right now at this time and we are getting our staff back from DSW work so we are able to provide services like in the past and besides that we are also getting some resources from the state library which we are using to our advantage to provide more services and in order to keep the staff engaged we have started some programs which there was a wellness uh, center wellness corner that we created for our staff on our uh, SharePoint page, which is mainly our intranet site where people can go um, share things with others like recipes or what they've been doing. There's an activity that's built in every week just to improve staff engagement and make sure everybody feels connected. So that was one initiative that was started then. It's still going strong, working very well for us. And we see uh, we hope to see it last a long time into the future. And then embracing new technologies. We uh, are trying to do some technology projects at this time to make sure that we get those done so we can move into the future after, into the after COVID time with a full um, foolproof system, well improved, a good system to move forward with. We are updating our AMHS system at this time. We are trying to bring in new technologies. Our libraries all have uh, laptop vending machines for our patrons, for the people that really need them. So um, that is another initiative that we did take up during this time and complete it. And we're also trying to bring uh, build strong uh, community partnerships. We have community resource spaces. We are trying to provide uh, staff for DSW disaster service work help to our community members and all that so they could get the uh, help they needed at the vaccination centers and all that. And I see that my time is up. And I, I wanted to just let you know some of the, uh, tell you about some of the initiatives that we have started, completed, and we are moving into the future now. So I forgot to tell you at the beginning, uh, of this time, we be coming to the end of our strategic plan. So as we couldn't, we didn't have anything then, we came up with these initiatives and this is how we had moved forward. And now we have a group that we are working with in order to come up with our strategic plan for the next few years. So moving out of this COVID time, we are hoping we are more, uh, we're trying to get a focused and um, get into the process in a thoughtful way so we can do our job even better and make sure we provide good services to our patrons. So I think I've come to the end of my presentation and I think I've, my time is up too. Thank you so much, Annapurna. That was that was really wonderful. Uh, and there was a request for your slides in the chat uh, in case you missed that. And my sincere apologies to Melissa, who I totally skipped over uh, in our <laughs> in, in, in the order. But uh, so uh, I hopefully she will forgive me and, and speak next uh, 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 about her her experiences here. So uh, here is Melissa Fraser Arnold. Thanks for the intro introduction, Deborah. No problem at all. I'm in, I, I'm enjoying listening to everyone's experiences here, so I, I don't mind going uh, before or after anyone else. Uh, so I'm I'm going to take a little bit of a different angle in my in my presentation. 
uh, and talk about some of the, the foundational work that we can do as, as uh, unit leaders, as team leaders, uh, or as individual employees and in kind of preparing and setting the groundwork for, for being ready for change. Uh, we've seen so much change in the last couple of years. And some of us really, it's, it's not, I mean, the, the magnitude has been different dealing with, dealing with a pandemic. Um, but for many of us, it's dealing with change hasn't been some, something that's new. We're working in environments where our, our, our clients are constantly asking for different things. Our focuses are, are changing. The subjects we deal with are changing. Um, so we really, we, we have to be change ready all the time. Um, and this is something that you that you can do even if you're not at the, the senior executive levels of an organization. This is something that individual team leaders and, and individual contributors can do to, to help to prepare an organization to be to be change ready and to adapt to to evolving environments. Uh, so the first the first thing that you as, as an individual within a library or another organization or you as a team leader can do uh, is is really get to know what your organization's main mission is. What, what is the main service, purpose that you serve? What is your, your, your organization's true goal? So once you know that mission, that will really inform all the services that you're providing. Um, and that mission is separate from your strategic plan. Your strategies are going to change. They're going to change every five years, every two years, every one year, and maybe even, even, even less time than that as we, as we come to, uh, to, to shorter time frames for our planning. Uh, but once you know that that mission, you find you figure out your your true north. Then you're able to really use that as the foundation for all of your other actions. Um, and you, as an individual employee, as a, as a manager, you it may not be it, it may not be something that's communicated every day, but it's something that you need to find out um, and use that to guide your planning. And that way, you can contribute and show what your what your work does that that feeds into that central plan. Uh, and, and additionally, once you get into the strategy level, you have a role as, as a team leader and as an individual contributor in, in helping to guide what that strategy can be and how ready your team is and what your clients here, what your, what your patrons, what your users are saying about the plan. Uh, so, so understand that main, that main focus and that will drive all of the, all of the team's work. Uh, so for your team itself, when you're contributing to that plan, uh, your, first, your first major action, especially during difficult times like this, is to understand where your team is at. I absolutely agree with what Amanda was saying that communication is key. Um, sharing with your team what's come from the what's come from senior management, but also sharing up with with senior management how your team is doing, how much capacity they have for new change projects, um, you know how much capacity they have for for everyday operational work. We've certainly seen that uh, things have been slower. Uh, to, it's been slower to get things done during the pandemic. We've, uh, it's, we, we haven't been able to just walk down the hall and ask a question to a colleague. Uh, we're now, you know, we're, we're now dealing with more asynchronous communications. Uh, we're dealing with supply chains that are a little bit, uh, a little bit more challenging. Um, so, so communicating that is, is really going to be key. And the other, the other element I would really advise is get to know what's going on outside of your own unit. Um, if you're in a large organization where, where the work is very specialized, it can be very easy to focus in on, on just your team's work and you're not getting the full picture. Uh, I, I, I tend to be a process person in my teams. I like to look at the full process from the point where, where the, work's, you know, the work request comes in to the point where it's delivered to your client. Uh, so encourage your, encourage your team members to look at, to talk to people around the organization, find out what's going on with them, find out what their pain points are during, during these difficult times, uh, to see if there are any places where you can improve the flow of, of, of your processes uh, to, be, to, be, you know, to be more flexible or to be faster or to, to work around issues that you're finding because of, you know, because of the challenges of the, uh, the external environment. And these can be Really small changes can be very powerful. Um, in, in the team where I'm working now, we, we've been done um, you know, things like simple template changes, um, which might not seem like a big deal, uh, doing a simple change to your template, but we found changing one field in a template allowed us to time our work differently, allowed us to get things done faster at times that weren't as, as busy in our, in our process flow than they would have been otherwise. So a simple, you know, a simple one, one column, you know, one row change in a, in a template can actually save your team hours of work during, during high pressure moments. Um, so that knowing that process and, and being willing to play with your process as well is, uh, is, is critical in, in being ready during these, uh, during these times of change. Um, and that comes from um, and that 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 really you're, you're, you as a manager are going to be setting the tone for whether your team is 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 going to be bringing you change ideas or not. Um, 
always being welcome to you know allow your team to discuss issues that come up. Uh, as a manager, sometimes you might feel pressured to have the answers. Um, I certainly know that I don't. I don't always have the best answers in my team. Uh, I look to I, I look to my to my to my staff to see what ideas they have to bring forward, and that's any member of the staff might have an excellent idea from from your new students to your to your you know 20, 30 year veterans in the team. We're all going to be uh, excellent contributors. Uh, certainly, people come with different backgrounds and different expertise. Uh, which is it's happened throughout that uh, that ideas have come up from the team that we've that we've brought forward that we've played with and tried. I uh, find sometimes uh, times like this are a great time for small pilots. Uh, if you're looking to try something new with with the way you deliver, uh, if you're looking at uh, you know again if you're looking at your process, you're thinking about your process differently. Uh, small change here or there might have a uh, may, make a big impact. And if you're just doing it as a pilot, if it doesn't work out. Uh, then you know. Then you've got some lessons learned, and you can take that as a, as an opportunity to learn rather than uh, rather than uh, you know a, a failing of any kind. Um, so these are these are key to to kind of contributing to that that uh, that flexibility. Uh, if you're looking at ways in which you can get your employees to feel comfortable with change and comfortable with bringing ideas forward, certainly in addition to that, that creating that environment as a manager where there's that openness to discussion, there's a looking at processes, there's looking around the organization, um, there's also some learning uh, that you can promote. Um, of course, uh, in this program, we, we are the, the leadership and management pack. So yes, we do. <laughs> we do have a great interest in, in management education, and there are great programs here at, at SJSU, um, but the, the topics that you can look for either through formal education or for your own, you know, through your own reading and your own um, webinar use, which this has never been a better time to watch webinars, uh, is topics like um, certainly communication, um, looking at, you know, formal change management training. Um, that's something that's not just for managers, your staff, is, it's, your staff can look at, at learning those things. Um, I've worked with my team when you've got um, when you've got great, highly skilled people with excellent ideas. It's often not the, the not the plan, not the strategy, not the the approach or the tactic that they need training on. Um, but it's learning how to communicate and sell those ideas to management uh, where the coaching comes in. Um, you can work on your coaching as a manager, but you can also encourage your, your employees to learn those coaching and leadership skills as well so that they can uh, they can start to. Uh, advocate for their ideas uh, through, you know, through your team and, and through different teams in the organization. Uh, so these are some of the, the foundations that you can do so that if you've got a team that's already looking at, at being incremental change ready, at looking at always, you know, always being prepared to, to look at improvement in processes, it makes it a lot easier to, to adapt once you're, when you're facing a situation where a larger change is needed. As it's not, uh, it's not uh, it's not as much of this it's always going to be a surprise when something like like COVID hits. Um, but if you have a team that knows that they have to always be ready to change, then when change comes, they're much they're much more able to face it. Um, and when they're not certainly be there for them, but you can look at uh, you it becomes to me easier to talk about the changes that happen in a process. and then you can focus your energy on, on the emotional and, and, and other aspects of, of change that people are going through. Uh, so I, uh, I did take a bit of a different approach here. Uh, we did have you know, small changes, large changes uh, that I'd be happy to discuss in, in question time, but I hope this provides you with, uh, uh, with some of a, 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 a foundation of, of, of what you can do as, even if you're not at the, the, highest, uh, the highest senior management level uh, to get your team and yourself ready for change. Thank you, Melissa. That was great. Uh, next up, we have Kelvin Watson. Um, uh, and so I'll hand it over to him. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Kelvin Watson, Executive Director for Las Vegas Park County Library District. And today I'm going to really talk about the uh, Playbook 2026. So I'm glad I had the opportunity to, you know, hear, you know, uh, to, to follow uh, my, my PAC colleagues and really talk about how you know, the uh, COVID-19, the global global pandemic for Las Vegas Clark County really, as for everybody, really instantly reshaped how we would function and deliver on our previous um, strategic plan, which was the Vision 2020. From the lessons learned during, during COVID-19, 
uh, the Las Vegas Clark County Library District developed and implemented what we call our is is our Playbook 2026. Uh, this is a, a a strategic approach that continues to strengthen and shape our library district as an essential community asset. Playbook 2026. Um, focuses on our customers, is community driven, but it also represents the lessons of our current era of adaptive change, pandemic pivots, and breaking systematic biases that are barriers to inclusion, innovation, and involvement. Playbook 2026 encourages everyone in every department in our organization to make what we call their, their best plays and achieve impact through four activators that I'm going to talk about powerful people, powerful places, powerful partnerships, and powerful platforms. Um, Playbook 2026 is really out to change the game and how you think about strategic, strategic planning and an approach. It's very flexible. It's ever evolving. It's like if you're a football fan, this is a perfect, you know, perfect type of plan to evolve to, to implement uh, because it's ever evolving. Um, and it's also inclusive of all departments, all of our branches, our operational staff uh, to demonstrate the public value and innovation. Uh, Playbook 2026 is transformational. We're, it's internal library learning um, impacting our external library learning experiences and the conditions that we uh, in, you know, ensure that all individuals and communities have resources uh, to move forward. So. What you'll see is our is our team roster, and that is uh, I'm the coach, and this is the this is the primary team that helped develop uh, the strategic playbook 2026. Um, it, it was a cross uh, functional uh, group across you know our, the organization, and really again focusing on our our the vision the mission and, and four parts, which are limited lear limitless learning, business and career success, government and social services, community and culture. And you'll see when I, when I show you the actual plays, how that's actually breaking down. And I'm gonna give you also some examples of, of how we've been executing the strategic playbook 2026 since we last implemented it uh, in July uh, 2021. So it's really a reinvention of the public library is what I think about uh, it being from, you know, from the social aspects, the, the learning aspects, economics, and then how you can tie in technology, uh, focusing uh, and looking at who your competition is, for example, Google, Amazon, and, you know, TikTok. And then, of course, the, the flexibility uh, of the pandemic and the wild cards and how that really has you know has can upset everything and how you have to you know be ready for uh, re ready to pivot. The playbook innovation, um, pre and post pandemic feedback is what we we used. We kind of tweaked some things from our previous uh, our previous uh, strategic plan, trash some things, and we did some transformation, and then we looked at how we can activate those strategies that I talked about to be more inclusive, responsive, relevant, and adaptive in focusing on people, places, partnerships, as well as platforms. Some of our, and, and then tying that back to those strategic directions that I mentioned earlier, which are the limitless learning, uh, business and career success, connecting to government and social services, as well as uh, community and culture. So limitless learning, breaking it down, this is what it's about, closing the education gap, being interest-driven, uh, learning, increasing literacy in all areas. Uh, Anna Poor actually talked about some of the things that we're actually doing here as well in executing uh, you know, our, our strategic playbook. And here are the actual plays when it comes to limitless learning. Powerful people, we're, you know, we're going to focus on the, the customers, the staff, the educators, volunteers, mentors, donors, uh, the C, you know, uh, CCSD, which is a Clark County School District, and partnering with, with them. And we've, we're offering our, our public library ebooks 
uh, to over 320,000 students uh, since the launch of this strategic plan. Um, powerful places, looking at our learning labs, our maker spaces and, and, and casinos, uh, local employers and uh, how how we actually activate learning and moving and pushing the library actually outside of the four uh, the four walls as well as leveraging the the walls of the library as well. So we put digital library access of uh, on four hundred of our buses here in Southern Nevada, leveraging those powerful places, powerful partnerships. Uh, again, CCSD, our charter schools, our, our post-secondary um, uh, partners, uh, CCSN, UNLV. Um, for example, we started launching classes with the College of Southern Nevada out of one of our branches about three weeks ago. So now we're offering class; they're offering classes out of our library building, so that the people in the neighborhood don't have to travel to the central campus. And then powerful, uh, powerful platforms looking at, you know, uh, online, more online databases, career online, high school, things like that to to move forward. And basically, I won't go through every one, but basically, that's kind of what we did for each one of those strategic focuses. We looked at it, business and career success, again, broke that down um, and then looked at the actual place and how we would actually demonstrate and execute on delivering with people, places, partnerships, and platforms. And then every branch, uh, here's the government. What I'm gonna say as I go through my slides, cause I'm, I know we gotta save some time for our, our next PAC speaker and some questions, but uh, every branch manager, every staff member is also developing their own individual uh, place their own plays that kind of build up uh, into the overall strategic uh, strategic plan. And so again, you can see how we did community, no, I just did the government, uh, the government and then community and culture here, here that is as well. And I'm gonna share my slides and make those available to everyone. Uh, and this is also on our website, the our strategic playbook 2026. Um, and so, I think I'm going to wrap it up after this, you know, very involved. As I said, we are all in it to win it. That's our approach. Uh, there's no, you know, you know, direct. It's, it's being innovative, entrepreneurial, coming up with ideas and executing them and being, being involved uh, in the community and focused on people, places, partners and platforms. So I think that is it for me and I will wrap it up there. Thank you. Thank you, Kelvin. Um, <clears throat> that was really great and very detailed uh, and I, I'm sure it's gonna generate a lot of conversation. Uh, Daphne, it is now your turn uh, and I'm going to hand it over to you. Thank you so much. And I, I apologize for the, uh, the sunlight coming in, but you won't have to see me on the screen for um, for much longer, I'd like to share something with with everyone. So I'm just going to um, select this, and here we go. So I hope everyone is able to see my screen, which should also be your screen, and you should see a document that says "Building a Bridge to a Better Future." So again, my name is Daphne Wood. And I'm very proud to be part of this very creative, very thoughtful PAC group. As you can tell, there's a lot of expertise around the virtual table. And I've learned a lot during the, uh, during the course of this session. I hope that I can contribute to the shared learning as well. I've brought something here that I'd like to, to share that hopefully will resonate with everyone who is listening because there are elements to what the previous speakers have mentioned. There are definitely some common threads. And what I want to show you in just a few moments is a bridging plan, which is a replacement to a traditional 
five-year strategic plan. That would be something that most organizations would have. And they would use that strategic plan to give a long range vision for where they are going based on the environment in which they work, um, the context, the, the pressures, um, previous speakers have mentioned those pressures and context. And uh, usually that plan um, that, that goes for that period of time informs the goals of the organization and can drive where the emphasis is going to be. What programs are offered? What services are delivered? What changes are made? But as we know, during the course of the pandemic, everything changed, absolutely everything. The way that we worked, the way that we connected with each other, the services that we were able to provide, or in some cases, we weren't able to provide them at all. So the answer and the response to those, those conditions were to take a different approach and take a very short-term look at what we could do for 24 months, rather than making a commitment for five years, which is what we had been doing. So I'm going to show you some of the, um, some of the content in this document. And what you see here is essentially four goals that are going to see us through to the end of October, 2023, which is actually not that far away now. So our, our plan is focusing on four specific things that are very clear. Goal one is digital literacy and access. And as part of that, we are very specific about what we will deliver and what we can commit to accomplishing within the 24 month period. The next focus will be on community building. And more specifically, this is going out and listening carefully to what the community would like to see, what the community challenges are coming out of the pandemic and, and living in a, uh, I guess, what is now referred to as the endemic <laughs> presence of COVID-19. Um, what we need to do differently here for Goal number two is rather than go back and restore what we had and offer what we had before, instead, we need to go out and listen carefully to uh, what the community is expressing as a need. We need to perhaps make connections rather than being the solution uh, holder for a particular thing. It, it's a, it's a, it's building on strengths we have to consult and to engage, but it's stopping short of turning on everything that had existed before. And instead it's putting it through a filter to make sure that be, because there have been so many changes, we want to make sure that we are responding to those changes rather than introducing what we know and what is comfortable and hoping that there is a receiver on the other end. So that's really what focused community building means for us. Goal number three is making a difference and showing impact. And I would summarize this one by saying, we need to be more transparent and show the value that we bring and contribute to every interaction in our communities. So for the first time, and actually, uh, something I finished earlier today was a the first quarterly report, which is a performance progress uh, dashboard of how we're accomplishing all of the projects that fall within these goals. And that's an important step for us to make this quarterly report outward facing, transparent. Um, it's informative. It, it's uh, definitely demonstrating our, our commitment to making um, making our words um, guide our actions when we make a, a promise like this for a bridging plan. And it's also really providing a lot of clarity for our staff, because if you work inside an organization such as this, um, you do need to know where to put your efforts and where to um, put your discretionary time and energy without uh, this bridging plan, I think many ideas, all of them well-intentioned, many of them good, 
would all try to advance at the same time and we would be competing and fighting for resources. So this clarifies the impact we're trying to make by aligning that impact to the goals that we have committed to accomplishing. And then finally, we get to goal number four, which is making space for everyone to be safe, respected, and valued. And that really, um, goal number four, is going to be the lens through which we view every single one of our goals. It's foundational to who we are. It's going to infuse, inform, and, and basically be the way that we do things. By the end of the bridging plan next October, we hope to be able to say that we have not only recognized the barriers that, that we know exist and found ways to mitigate them, but that we have been much more open and receptive to things that we don't even recognize, to unlearn the things that we have learned in some cases, and be models for continuously challenging and um, being receptive to doing better and to doing things differently. So that brings to a close my, my presentation at the end. Just wanted to, to leave you with um, a look at what a, a very short bridging plan of 24 months looks like for someone inside an organization versus a five-year plan that can be more ephemeral. And last thing I'd like to add, if you can see with the, with the sunlight is, of course, the, the topic for this session is um, it's all about transformation. It's all about game changing. And I've had to make some last minute adjustments and gain a, a change to my, uh, my presentation, because if you can see this, there we go. Um, I have a puppy and moments before we started, she grabbed my headset and chewed it <laughs> to these little pieces. So um, that's, that's uh, a, a loss of technology here, but um, I had a plan B. So I hope, I hope everyone enjoyed the session and all of our previous speakers. And now we can turn to the questions. Thank you. Thank you, Daphne. There is uh, nothing quite like a puppy to uh, encourage us to be flexible in our approach to life. <laughs> Um, so before we uh, open it up to everybody to ask uh, some questions, uh, Sue and I thought that it would be uh, nice <laughs> to start with um, In asking the presenters if they have any questions for each other or anything that they'd like to, to, to share now that they've heard what everybody else has said, because um, there was a lot of synergies that happened, and I think, um, and a lot of building off of each other, but you also shared some very specific specific details about your uh, various plans and approaches. So I think it would be, uh, I think we'll start there. So if there's any questions you have for each other. Well, this is Sue. This is not normally a, a shy group, um, but I'll give you a moment for you to maybe think of something that you want to ask uh, each other. And I'm glad that Daphne um, went last and was able to point out that there were common threads through each of the presentations. Uh, some were more um, obvious than others. And I actually wrote down questions for everybody, but I'm just going to start with it's kind of an observation and kind of a question for um, Melissa and Calvin. Melissa ended her presentation by saying somewhat something like that the staff will be ready for change whenever it comes. And, you know, I'm, I'm wondering if you could talk a little bit about how you get the staff ready to accept that. But Calvin, on the other hand, I know that maybe other people don't, that you came into Las Vegas, Clark County in the middle of the pandemic. And was the, the playbook developed in-house? Did you um, bring that in? And how accepting is the staff of what seems to me to be a really big change um, in the status quo or the way the planning goes. So maybe I'll, I'll hand it to Melissa first and then to Calvin and then others can jump in. Yes, I can talk about getting, getting staff ready for change. 
uh, I think this is something that that I, there you're always going to have some staff who are who are just going to be innately you know ready for change at any time who are going to be your early adopters who are going to be pushing things along sometimes you'll have a, a larger number than others in a team um, I find part of it is um, you definitely you as a manager have to prime your team for change um, when you when you see a change coming um, you sort of you know let your team know as soon as possible give a lot of early warning um, thinking back to the start of this of the pandemic, uh, when we started hearing that there was a possibility that there would be closures, there was a possibility that that you know that that this was going to hit hard. Um, I think we, as a manager, we 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 right away, you know, we told the team this is a possibility. We need to come up with contingencies right away. Um, it's it's I, I sometimes there can be a tendency to think thing you not expect the worst to sort of think that we'll we'll kind of dodge this and it'll be fine. And if you do that, you're 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 not giving your team enough warning to actually start getting work done. And because we tend we you know when we saw that coming, we we started jumping on it. It made it a little bit easier. Um, but some of it also, I mean, that that kind of it can also be get kind of built in at the cultural level that you kind of expect, you know, that there's a certain amount of of change that's going to come along. You prepare your team to to adjust. Um, you prepare your team to um, part of you know being in our, our limited resource environment. Our, our teams are always making choices about where they where they can invest their time. Um, and that's true. It's always been true. Even before the pandemic, we 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 don't we simply don't have the, the people and the money to be able to do everything that we want to do. Uh, so people are 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 having to pivot, and they understand that they have to pivot when uh, when when change comes or when new priorities come, so that they they can't do everything. So they know that that there's change there. Um, it's it's hard to gauge how how change ready your team is without talking to them. That's 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 going to be the key. Is is really go out and see how 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 ready people are. Um, you know, we as managers would like to just say yes, our teams are all ready to go. They're ready for change. Um, but even the most change ready person might have a point where they they've just had enough change. <laughs> they've just they've just faced enough, and you need to be able to know when people hit that point, um, or if they're getting close to that point. Uh, so that you can can kind of tailor what you're doing, you know, give that that employee what they need, um, so that your team can move forward together. So Sue, I'll jump right in um, to talk a little bit about the uh, you know, yes, I came into the organization last February as the executive director. The library district was uh, was somewhat open. We were still doing curbside. But all of our buildings were open, and we were serving the, you know, serving the, you know, the public. And so I, we were, we were, we had already been working, or the team had already been working uh, cross functionally on a new strategic plan to update what we had been calling Vision Twenty Twenty. Um, and when I had the opportunity to uh, insert, you know, my vision as the as the new leader. I brought forth the Strategic Playbook 2026, which really talks about partners, as again, those, those, those pillars, partners and programs and platforms um, and, and places, but it also emphasizes execution and getting things done, which is, that's, that's who I am and, and, and as a leader, and I, you know, and I had uh, previously been a part of the library system when I was at Queens, where we had implemented a similar uh, strategic playbook. And so I just adapted it here along with the team to fit where we were already going, but to actually add actionable um, things that we could actually do and get done. And people can actually feel like they are, uh, you know, which they are, they've helped develop and recommend those strategies. We then... Uh, you know, implement the tactics <laughs> to, to actually, you know, actually getting it done. And um, that's, that's not been as hard as you would think, because I, the, the library district, at least this organization was ready, I think, to actually see some things happen, get some things done. The community was, you know, has been wanting that as well uh, for this, for this library district. And this week, we, you know, I, I celebrated National, you know, National Library Week uh, at the City Council and the, and the county, 
And when you can have county commissioners who I don't report to, but I was you know giving them a, a giving them a report of the library district, say that they have seen the dif difference in the year of what we've been doing as a library district. That is a result uh, of the staff and the team taking hold of that strategic playbook and actually executing it. Thank you, Calvin. And I don't know if you've had a chance to look in the uh, chat, but Martine has um, a question for you that when a new director comes into an organization, what did you do to prepare your team for thinking differently? Oh, thanks. Thanks, Martine. I hadn't seen that question. So I'll, I'll answer it really, really quickly. So, um, you know, I've had the opportunity to come in and be a new director a few times. Uh, and so how do I prepare the organization? Um, it's communication. Uh, it's, it's me listening uh, to, to the organization, to the team members. Uh, you know, I set a, I always set a plan. Um, for example, I visited all 25 locations within the first 30 days of my being here, along with you know, meeting people in the community, uh, et cetera. And then it's, it's also then communicating my, uh, my thoughts about what I'm seeing, both verbally and writing and, and, and talking about how not just libraries, actually, interesting enough, I don't tend to use libraries um, always as my examples for my library teams. I actually use um, other uh, industries in the community, such as retailers, such as grocery stores, and how they are communicating. You know, Wegmans, for example, how do, how they do customer service. And so, though I so I I prepare them to think differently because I bring in I'm bringing in some different ideas um, as a as a new director. That's how I've done it, Martine. When I've come into not just Las Vegas, but I did the same and similar type process when I came into Broward. Um, and then I talk about agile, um, you know, agile and, and agility. And then we actually put agile software development, not just in IT, but we, we execute agile as an, as an overall organization. And so when you actually do those things and, and you're communicating them at the same time, and then you can, again, one year later, you can see like all the results of, 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 of uh, and recognitions that are coming to the library district. That's, that's how I've done it. And again, it's, it's communication though. Bottom line is communication. You fix the communication or start working on the communication. Uh, that's what I would always tell people. Well, thank you, Calvin. And that segs into the, uh, the last observation I was going to make for Amanda, Anna, and Daphne um, with the communication, because Amanda, you focused a lot on communication on your team, which is really important. Um, and for the, the wellness of, of your team members, Anna also had a slide up that focused on staff wellness and safety, as did Daphne. So I didn't know if we only have like two minutes left. Um, actually, we're at the top of the hour, but um, we, we want to start on time and end on time. But I did want to acknowledge that um, everyone here did have the common thread. Communication is there and um, change um, and transformation in, in this um, impossible time of all kinds of possibilities. So I guess I will thank everybody, but I'll turn it over to Deborah to close us out. I wanna thank everybody as well. This has been really um, great and uh, I think uh, will benefit all of our students here and hopefully as well, perhaps some uh, professionals out there in the, in the wilds who are interested in the topic of change management. And uh, so yes, thank you all for being here. And um, I hope we are able to have everyone join us again for uh, our next, uh, webinar. I think we have decided that this idea of game changer is going to be a really exciting 
um, a series of uh, of webinars in the future. So I, I hope everybody joins us. And hello, puppies, uh, <laughs> as we leave. Tucker says always, hello. <laughs> always nice to have some cameos by our, our furry friends. So again, thank you, everyone. Uh, this has been really, really wonderful. And thank you for your time.